And I know that some of you are here regarding the joint teacher of the buildings that will continue to make the Emperor School District the great school district that it is. And I know that some of you are here regarding the joint guidance up from the U.S. Department of Education, the Department of Justice on the rights of transgender students. Public schools regularly receive guidance from these agencies on matters impacting the rights of students, and the courts generally defer to this guidance. The Amherst Board of Education neither supports nor opposes the federal guidance, which applies to every public school district in the country. However, after consulting with our district attorneys, we accept that it is in our best interest in the district to comply. The Amherst Board of Education will not be adopting a blanket or generic bathroom or locker room policy because there is no requirement that we do so at this time. Instead, we will continue to meet the needs of our students on an individual case-by-case -case basis. We have and we will continue to work with our students discreetly and respectfully like we always have. The Board of Education is required by the law and will continue to protect all students from bullying, harassment, discrimination in access to the curriculum, extracurricular activities, facilities and services of Amherst schools without regard to race, color, national origin, gender, disability, age, or religion. I'm especially proud of our students who have responded with support and acceptance of their classmates. We wish that we could shield all of our students from every danger in the world. Student safety is a top priority for Amherst schools. While we take every precaution across, across school grounds, once our students leave our watch, it is their critical responsibility to bring that mutual respect and compassion for others into the outside world. It is our best chance for a safer future, and they are surely up to that task. As always, we welcome the input and expressions of parents and community members on how to best serve the children of our district. During this public participation segment, the board will listen to residents we will not answer questions or respond tonight, although we may direct the administration to follow up with you if and when necessary. With that, we return to item six on the agenda, which is the public participation of the Board of Education. It is designed for the public to address the board with their complaints and or concern. The board welcomes and appreciates your comments. If you wish to address the board regarding a problem, we will certainly listen. Second, when you come to address us, we ask that you state your name. With, we know what you're all here to talk about. There's no one here that's not signed up to talk anything different other than the transgender issue that has been brought before us. Okay? Individual statements should not exceed five minutes, and we have allotted 30 minutes for this time. Uh, the reason we've allotted 30 minutes is because we feel that once we've heard from about 10 or 12 of you, the message is going to be the same. If someone has something different to say, we do have the right or I have the right to extend that if, if I deem necessary at that point in time. With that said, we call the first person who signed up, which would be Marcos. Marcos, would you please come forward? Uh, my name is Marcos Selfie Nails. Um, I'm a dad. And uh, I want to say up front, we all want the same thing. All those things you said, we all want that for all kids. Okay, so. Dear board members, we are gathered here today because our school administration has declared both in action and words that they support the implementation of an open bathroom, locker room policy in our Amherst schools. It may surprise you that both transgender and non-transgender parents are here motivated by the same reason and towards the same goal. The reason we are here is the intense, passionate love that we as parents have towards our children. The goal is to fight to ensure that our children's legitimate needs and feelings as well as their right to safety, modesty, and privacy will not be violated by being forced to be in a bathroom locker room where they will be exposed to people who they perceive to be their gender opposite. The problem is that the solution that the administration is supporting is a terrible one-sided solution. Their solution completely ignores the legitimate needs and feelings of the 99.7% of non-transgender students and parents choosing instead to trash their safety, modesty, purity, and privacy rights. The administration's endorsement of this policy demonstrates a blatant disregard for our legitimate concerns 
and is a great injustice that we, the parents of non-transgender students, will not allow nor accept under any circumstance. We are outraged at the injustice of a school administration that is supporting and pushing this one-sided policy without any public discourse and without any consultation with the board which represents we the parents. Forty days have passed and you still have not answered a single question that we have asked. And even now you have changed the rules of this meeting so as to limit our civil discourse and silence the 99.7% of parents' concerns on this issue. We are outraged at the injustice of having our sons and daughters without parental approval, forced to watch during class time controversial and offensive material that attempts to delegitimize their sincere concerns, feelings, and discomfort with being exposed to people they perceive to be their opposite gender. School hours for teaching are for teaching science, math, and history, not for propagating religion and extremist ideologies. We are outraged that this administration perceives us as ignorant enough to use the false pretense that we don't have a choice in this matter because this, as you stated, is a federal mandate and therefore we must comply. With all due respect, that is bold. The letter from the Attorney General of Ohio, Mike DeWine, states very clearly and emphatically that the mandate is no mandate. In fact, it is illegal. No one must comply and no one should comply. We are outraged that this administration, by choosing to support this open bathroom locker room policy, has effectively made a decision to put a price tag on the precious safety, purity, modesty, and right to bodily privacy of the children that we so deeply love. A price tag that amounts to $444.03 per student. We are outraged that the administration currently has no written bathroom locker room policy at all. No one knows, nor cares, nor does anyone enforce whether or not students are using facilities that are dedicated to the opposite sex. This unwritten, don't ask, don't tell policy is the most reckless, dangerous, careless, and negligent policy imaginable. And it guarantees, even enables, that all students, both transgender and non-transgender, will be violated, yet we as parents are not informed of the risk. Therefore, we can't take the necessary action to protect our children. Mr. Sayers, the parents, grandparents, and all the good people that you see right here in this great community of Amherst, they will not stand still while the hearts, minds, and bodies of our children are prostituted on the altar of political correctness, extremism, and negligence. We will not stand by and allow you to endorse a policy that will violate the modesty, safety, purity, and privacy rights of the children that we love. No, sir, not in Amherst, Ohio. We, we will fight with our heart, we will fight with our mind, we will fight with our souls to protect the children we passionately love. Mark Oscar, five minutes is up. No, it is not, sir. I have a timer. We are demanding, I'm going to be done in 30 seconds, please. We are demanding that this board follow the lead of fellow um, board member Bob Kamnikar and reject the terrible one-sided policy that this administration is trying to force down our throats. Instead, we ask you to form a committee and work with the people of this great town of Amherst, whom you represent, to write a common sense policy, a policy that will satisfy the needs of all children. You must also put an end to the unwritten, reckless, negligent, don't ask, don't tell policy that is in place today. Until a clear written policy is implemented, our children are at risk of being violated and our school is at risk of litigation. Therefore, it is imperative that this common sense bathroom locker room policy be in place before the beginning of the new school year. If not, then you must place monitors at every bathroom entrance until a written policy is in place. And one th other thing I want to add, relating to all the good people who are here, um, these parents are passionate on this issue. They deserve to be heard. There are some here who would want to silence us. It would be a travesty that you, the board, that we elected and which is supposed to represent these great people would violate their right to due process. If you care about these people, about what these people have to say, then please let everyone who wants to to speak. We are not robots, so we're not going to spit out the same things. These are people of emotion who care about their children, so do not categorize them as robots. Let them speak, please. Thank you. Would you please come forward? Just please state your full name. Tina Ficasello. Thank you so much for the opportunity um, to speak, and I'd first like to say that I am not one of the we that Marcos referred to. I thank you so much, 
so much from the bottom of my heart for your compassion and um, all that Amherst is doing for their students to recognize all their students and to really care and being here and seeing all the students that are here I'm, I'm really moved by that so please know that not everyone agrees with the statements um, uh, especially myself I'd like that to go on record I have two children at 10 Amherst schools the reason I feel so passionately is my oldest child is transgender um, he told me mom I want to be called by a boy's name uh, last October and it was it was hard for me at first I thought um, you know this will pass it's a phase and I realize now that it's not um, there's been many challenges for me as you can imagine um, restrooms dressing rooms dating uh, what fitting room to use when we're out in public and the schools here have been incredibly compassionate and um, also I appreciate the policy that you have in place allowing children to use the restrooms that they're comfortable using. It's also been a huge opportunity for me to learn more. I've done more reading and visited the uh, ed.gov site more than I think I ever have in my life. Um, I also visited a site I recommend called genderspectrum.org. Very helpful understanding transgender and um, really it states that the, our, our definition of male and female as being binary is actually uh, can be seen um, more fluidly and that I'm hearing and what I'm understanding is there's so many children that don't recognize, don't identify as male or female they are uh, maybe what the site refers to as fluid but we don't have time to discuss all that here today I do appreciate um, one thing I will agree with is we are here because we care about our kids we care about our community and I actually did talk to our doctor our family doctor with um, my son I didn't know what the answer is I still don't know what the answer is and um, her response that I, I'd like to say was we want you to have a good experience while my child wants to use the men's restroom because that's how he's identifying he has female body parts very clearly has breasts and is not sure how boys would react if he uses a boys bathroom the um, school has offered for him to use the single stall restroom which I'm so thankful for and I, I think that's a, a very helpful However, I don't believe schools can mandate that as a solution, and I know some of the parents have been talking about that. Um, I feel it, it violates our rights for privacy, and it also, um, I, I think, is very scary towards uh, segregation, telling students they have to use a certain restroom because they're different than the boys or they're different than the girls. He, um, and before I came here, I asked him if he wanted to come, and he said, no, I, I really don't want to be there. I think it would be upsetting for him to hear some of the comments, so I'm glad that he's not here. Um, but I asked him, I said, what do you think? What do you want me to say? And he says, Mom, I don't care. I just want to pee. <laughs> and I know we've been hearing that kind of as a, as a joke or to make it lighthearted, but that's really what it boils down to. The kids only have so many, so many minutes between class. If they need to use a restroom, having a single stall restroom is not necessarily the solution for them. They may have to wait for other children. Um, so I do appreciate the, the policy that, that my child is used, allowed to use the restroom where he, he identifies. Um, I do want to just close again, thanking so much um, Board of Education for all that you do, for all the people that came out tonight, for um, having a pride club at this school when I talk to other people and I say, you know, Amherst is fantastic they're so supportive they have a pride club there's so many children I don't know if you realize this in that pride club that cannot tell their parents how they feel they have no one else to talk to they're alone or they've tried to talk to their parents and their parents shut it down so thank you so much for having this a place where they can come and and have someone to talk to and have other kids that, that they can relate to my child's very active here my child's active in band my child's active in theater as well. So I, um, 
I will just conclude again by saying thank you and remembering or reminding everyone here we're not here for religious or political or even our own views. We're here for our children, and I just hope that we can continue to move forward with kindness and compassion. Thank you so much. Yes, my name is Vicki Gruski, and I'm a resident of Amherst. I'm a special ed teacher in a neighboring school district. Um, just been a teacher two years. I've always been a stay-at-home mom, but most importantly, I'm an advocate for children. I'm an advocate for all children. Um, my son has tried the public schools. He's tried the parochial schools. He's been bullied to no end. I've had absolutely the most wonderful relationship with Amherst Schools and Sarah Walker, the special ed director who helps me whenever I need her, even if my son is going to a different school on the autism scholarship or being homeschooled. I couldn't ask for a better advocate for a child than Sarah Walker. I have emailed all the board members. I had a response from Mr. Engel telling me that they're going to exactly what he told the last. I asked everybody, I also emailed Mr. Sayers with no response. I asked all the board members for their opinion. The only one that gave me their true, honest opinion was Mr. Bob Kamnikar, who I want to thank very much. It proves to me that somebody does represent the people of Amherst. An Amherst parent texted me yesterday after church at Trinity Church in Amherst. She said, Vicki, my kids are so upset about this. I said, how so? I said, how do your children know, young children? She said that a person of opposite sex would come into their bathroom. They're talking about it at brunch this morning after church. My Nick will never use the bathroom at school, and Hannah is really scared. Johnny, who's going to be in seventh grade, said, all the bad kids are going to use that rule, and they're going to get into the girls' bathroom, Mom. As we often say, out of the mouths of babes. The mom then went on to say, I thought Mr. Sayers and Mr. Molnar were men with integrity and good moral values, and I was hoping that the school board members that I voted for shared the same integrity and good moral values. She says, Vicki, why aren't they handling this with more caution? There's so many compromises that can be made. I'm telling you and I'm telling everybody in the audience, this is opening up a huge can of worms. This will go way beyond the hours of school and into the hours of extracurricular activities, such as basketball games that bring in hundreds from other communities on a Friday night, perhaps the Comet Relays that bring in over a thousand people. Men will be going into the female restrooms. They don't have to be dressed like a woman if they're transgender. They can be bearded and dressed like a male. Male coaches will now be able to go into the girls' locker room and female coaches will have the opportunity to go into the boys' locker rooms. What about the teachers' bathrooms? I was thinking with my friend, maybe the teachers and staff should practice this decision made by our administration first and report back to us as citizens how it goes. Also, transgenders can be homosexual or straight. This is putting a lot of pressure on the transgender students if you think it through. You are putting all students and all children at risk. Transgender persons and the LGBTQ community are not asking for equal rights. What they are asking for are special rights that violate the dignity and the privacy of women and girls and simple common sense. Mr. Sayers, I am asking you to please reconsider your decision to comply to this unlawful mandate and do what is right for the children of the Amherst School District. After all, Mike DeWine, the Attorney General of Ohio, has given you and all the other districts his promise to vigorously, vigorously defend each one of the school district's interests. I am pleading with you. Some people might recognize my name because I fought against Common Core and the park test and over-testing. I invited every one of you gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, to the meeting. The only one, Teresa Gillis. We had a forum of uh, over 120 people, standing room only. I asked Mr. Sayers to speak. I had to have the superintendent of Avon Lake come and speak. Every school board was there 
Firelands, Avon, Avon Lake, but the Amherst School Board. I sent every one of you emails. I sent Ron Yagabosi 12 emails. Mr. Molnar came to sit in the office. I teach in Lorraine City Schools. My superintendent came to represent me. We need to have more support from you. We elect each and every one of you to represent us. At a breakfast, I was talking to two parents and she said, Vicki, it makes you wonder, do they really represent us or are, is the board simply order takers? I am pleading you to reconsider, Mr. Sayers, and make a compromise that is good for all. Thank you very much. I'm, Kir <clears throat> I'm Kirsten Penton Hill, and I thank all of you and your families for all the time and effort you have given to the community over the years. And also thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Uh, way back when, my father and grandfather were on the Amherst School Board. And I have been a member of the Amherst Schools Education Foundation for many years and am interested in things being on the up and up in this community. We citizens vote by democratic process for the maintenance of our schools and teachers. You as school board members were democratically elected and we ask that you please consider the democratic process in regards to the Dear Colleague letter, which is very concerning to the community. We do not want you to collapse from fear or political correctness, as did the superintendent on this issue, which is so important to the cohesiveness of our community. The Dear Colleague letter, dated May 13th, sent by the Federal Department, Federal Department of Justice and the Federal Department of Education is merely an introduction. Yes, you can take a look at the threats and the punishments involved. It contains threatening language, for example, loss of financial support, but this letter does not have the force of law. This is something conjured up by the Washington bureaucracy. I am sure of this, as you see in the letter that you have from Ohio Attorney General Mike DeWine, who is saying he will defend us. So, please follow the democratic process by studying this issue, researching the issue, and speaking with others before you take any action. Please read Attorney General DeWine's letter. Please research it more, deliberate it, and have public hearings. The superintendent and the local school board is here to serve us, not the Federal Department of Justice and not the Federal Department of Education. Well, and I repeat her thanks to you serving as our board members and assuring a good school district that um, we've all witnessed. Um, I'm here as a parent of adult children who attended Amherst schools, grandmother of children who will attend schools in Lorain County, and um, a taxpayer who has an interest and, uh, in the well-being of this district. I'm a former educator myself. I've been an active participant in the music culture for, I hate to say, it was 52 years. And um, so I'm in no way any type that, of a a protected, narrow-minded person. I understand the culture that they, uh, we are working to protect, and I also understand all sides. Um, I've been, I became involved because of the lack of policy and due process, which would put our children and adults in possible jeopardy, uh, creating an issue with, and if, if we are in jeopardy and in turn get sued for anything that is, um, someone gets hurt in a situation, we as taxpayers have our property rights in jeopardy also because it, that will cost our district money and let alone the protection of everybody involved. As was earlier um, spoken to, the, uh, the bigger issues are not just the dear sweet children that you probably are encountering daily and, and taking it, um, you said that they've been handled in an in a, you know, individual basis, which is awesome. Um, I'm not encouraging intolerance, but I am encouraging wisdom. If you're enacting a policy, you need to bring in the conversation and the what ifs before it's, it's written. 10, 15 years, you didn't even need a policy, or 10 years ago, you didn't need a policy like this. But now we have new issues thrust upon us uh, from above, and they are, if they had done the proper discussion up at the level instead of just mandating a letter, 
you would not be sitting listening to all of us and taking a lot of time. And I think there needs to be some pushback on that. I think all of us were kind of disturbed in the, in the method that this was. And so that's why I am standing here that due process happens forever. You know, it, this might not be a hot button issue for certain people. We all might be on different sides, but someday an issue that's really big is going to not follow due process. And unless we stand here and say it needs to happen, then we are relinquishing any right to complain later on. Um, I just kind of thought by the announcement of the change of times and the limiting of times that you were trying to circumvent dialogue. I hope that's not true. But I do say, please consider if there are other people that need to speak, don't assume that we're all saying the same thing. There may be five, seven of us that are going to say that we've, you know, con um, con thought about this issue a little bit together. But um, please don't assume. And uh, I, let's see. Uh, trying to implement without cogent policy is doing a disservice to our district and a bit precipitous, actually. Um, due process we've talked about, property rights we've talked about. No one wants to be singled out as different and having a hard time living a life that's hard enough as it is. However, forever people have had to deal with that, ADHD. Um, they have to be taken out of the room and taken the test separately. They didn't make every individual child take a separate test. So, you know, everybody has had to make accommodations. I hope you work together with everyone. And um, that is all I have to say. So thank you very much. I really trust your good judgment for really listening and doing your due diligence in researching this project. Amy? Amy and I come before you the board um, just to express my views as a resident here in Amherst and a mother of two children I would just ask that you be open to all opinions and all views and the way that this has come about with this meeting has me feeling as though our views are not wanting to be heard I understand you're giving us the time um, to listen to us here but not being able to consider all view you know, giving us that opportunity to be input and hear what's going to happen. These are our children we're speaking about. These are, um, we're trying to accommodate a few, of course, to give them equal, you know, be, show them love and show them compassion, but there's also a position that you're putting the other children in that makes them feel, not all, but um, I know for my children, makes them feel uncomfortable in our conversations. And I just ask that you please just, um, as we go forward, just listen to our, us as parents, accept us, our views, we all have different views, but um, allow us to, you know, really care about, give us give us the opportunity to be heard, and please consider us, because, you know, we want to consider those select few and make them feel, you know, cared for, but we also have other children's needs to meet as well. I thank you for your time, and I trust that you will go forward and do this for us. Hello, my name is Joe Kozak. <clears throat> I'm here, at the same for most of the people here. Uh, I'm a father of two young girls that will be entering the Amherst School District <clears throat> this coming fall, uh, and am concerned about their safety and, and their feelings being kept uh, in front of everybody else as they will be uh, uh, approaching the situation the same way. I'm also concerned with the fact that how this was being pushed through, it seemed like it was uh, a forced issue not allowing uh, uh, the same due process that was mentioned before uh, and not to not to uh, uh, forget the feelings of the students that are here and everyone's here that's to support the transgenders but we need to make sure that we consider all the kids that are uh, that are in, uh, invested in the schools as well not not just one small group or another small group but the entirety Thank you. Joshua. Joshua.